It's been a butt whooping from Big Al. Those Rhode Island penny boxes have been tough. After two rounds, we've gotten smoked. 72 and a half points in this last box and a beautiful 1998 Philadelphia minted wide AM variety. But we have round three. Will his box fall off and my box pick it up? Let's find out. Hey everybody, it's Rob with Rob Finds Treasure. That's right, it's finally time to wrap up this Rhode Island versus Texas Penny Box Battle Series. Rhode Island's boxes have been really good up there in the Northeast. My Texas boxes have been a little bit better than average, but points-wise, we're getting smoked. He's actually leading 57 and a half points per box to my 22. I've scored 22 points in back-to-back -back boxes, and I've had about 11 and a half wheat cents per box. Not a bad number. But when you compare them to the sheer magnitude of wheat cents found in his boxes, 17 in box one, 21 in box two, a good assortment of earlier ones, a variety, man, it's been tough. That being said, I'm optimistic that maybe I can catch a W on this box, or even at worst case, we'll find some more goodies in that Rhode Island box. I've already checked them, they're circulated, so there's no reason to show you the tops. I didn't see any enders. Big Al, Rhode Island Relic Diggers, it's time to see what your box three is all about. I'll get it kicked off with roll number one. And as always, I'll loop you guys in. If we find something, if I can get the roll out, if we find something worth mentioning. Roll number two, another quick start with a wheat scent. 1944 Philadelphia. Same roll, second wheat scent, 1958 out of Denver. Roll three, and we're going to have our third wheat scent already, and uh, this one's a 1956 Denver. Not in bad shape. Good toning, too. Three wheat scents. Three rolls. Roll number five is an odd find. It's almost like it's missing the copper layer, but it's a 1994 Philadelphia minted Lincoln scent. I did check it for the DDR. It wasn't there. Uh, it could be post-mint damage, but still a cool find nonetheless. So we're putting that aside for a later inspection. Roll number six. Wheat scent number four. 1942 Philly. Roll 13. Almost an ender. Second from the end of the roll, we have a wheat scent. It's going to be number five. And it's another 44. Roll 20. A little bit of a dry spell, but we're going to have our sixth wheat scent of the box already. 52 Denver. Roll 27. Wheat scent number seven. A 55 Denver. Roll 28. Wheat scent number eight. 1951 Philadelphia. Getting on a little hot streak here. Roll 29, and we're going to have wheat scent number nine. That's three straight rolls with a weedy. 1946 Philadelphia. Same roll. Wheat scent number 10, 56, Philadelphia. Roll 30, wheat scent number 11, 1946, Denver. Roll 32, wheat scent number 12. Good toning on this one, 1956, Denver. Roll 33 is going to yield wheat scent number 13. Another 1944. Roll 34 is going to have a wheat scent ender. It's going to be number 14. Let's see what it is. That wheat scent ender. Another 44. Roll 38. Wheat scent number 15. And it's a 1955 out of Philly. No doubling on it. That would have been super cool to get the very rare 1955 PDDO. But I like seeing them anyway because I don't see them too often. Roll 41. Wheat scent number 16. 1946 Philly. Roll 45 and we're going to have wheat scent number 17 with the Canadian behind it. The wheat scent is a 57 Philadelphia. And this will make Canadian number 12. 
Roll 46. Weight sent number 18. Another 57. So nothing old in this box so far, but 18 wheat cents, probably gonna get one or two more. Another great box. Roll 47, wheat set number 19. A 52 out of Philly. And yeah, number 20, another 44. Roll 49, wheat set 21. Another Rhode Island box with 21 wheat cents. 1941 Philly. That's actually the oldest of the hunt. Well, we finished Big Al Rhode Island Relic Diggers box from Rhode Island, of course, and uh, another dandy. 21 wheat cents. Nothing older than 41 this time. So even though there's a lot of them, if I can find some oldies in my box, I stand a chance. I think the coolest find of the box is probably this 1994 Lincoln scent that could be missing its copper plating, or it could just be a science class experiment. We won't know for sure unless I were to send it off. And I've looked at it under the scope. I can't quite tell. It does weigh 2.4 grams, so it's a little lighter. But you just never know. We'll put it to the side for now. We'll look at that another time. 13 Canadian cents. They won't count, but two were young heads, and that was cool. We got six from 59. Two Keeper Lincoln Memorial cents that are pretty nice. No 69 S's. We have a chance on this box. I'll get it plugged in the stat sheet, but we'll save the score until after I finish hunting my box. Let me clear out the discards and let's kick into mine. Roll number nine of my box and I haven't found any wheat scents yet, but I've got an interesting one here. It almost looks like it could be a clipped planchet. And if you look directly across from it, 180 degrees, Looks like it could be a weaker strike on the rim on this side. Yeah, see how it's flared out just a little bit there? So I'm pretty certain that that's gonna be a clipped planchet, in my opinion. So not a very valuable mint air, especially how small the clip is. But I'm pretty sure that that is a clipped planchet just based off of what I see 180 degrees straight across from it with that flared out rim. So I'm going to count that as an error. Whoa, what was the year, by the way? 1980D clipped planchet. We'll take it. Roll 18 and we're finally going to get our first wheat set. I was getting worried here. It's nice to see one. Maybe it's a little bit older. Nope. Another 44. First of my box, but we found a lot in this hunt. Roll 20, wheat set number two, and I almost missed it because of the discoloration, but it's a 58D nonetheless. Well, coin roll hunting can be tough sometimes. As fate would have it, I have never hunted a penny box that yielded less than three wheat cents found. Now I have found two or three boxes that only had three, but that's my lowest of all time. Mark this date down. Only two wheat cents found in that entire box. That is by far my lowest amount of fines in a box that I've ever experienced. It happens, and it couldn't come at a better time for Big Al because he had his lowest box ever as well. The only saving grace is this clipped planchet. It's going to score good points. But we only needed a handful of wheat cents and a few side fines, and we probably would at least took the round. Now with only two wheat cents... A couple of 59s, one nice coin, and two 69s's, both not the DDO, toss in a couple of Canadians. I think we actually lost round three as well. Let me get them in the stat sheet and make it official. Well, it's official. I got them plugged into the stat sheets. Rhode Island's penny box scored a 37 and a half point box. It's worst of the three boxes. Even though it got 21 wheat cents, because there was nothing old and there wasn't a lot of side finds, it had its lowest. My box actually had its best total because of the error or variety section that it scored 25 points on. But sans that, six and a half point box otherwise. At the end of the day, Rhode Island actually doubled my output, a little more than doubled, and beat me 50.8 points to 25.2 points per box. What a whooping. Still, it was a lot of fun. I wanna thank Big Al Rhode Island Relic Diggers 
for the boxes that he sent me. I had a lot of fun hunting the Northeast boxes because there's so many Philadelphia minted coins. I can check a lot of them for the varieties. We ended up only finding one variety, a 98P wide AM from the Rhode Island boxes. We did find a possible missing copper plating penny, which I will look into down the road. And we did find a clipped planchet in one of mine, which is pretty cool. Thanks again, Big Al Rhode Island Relic Diggers, for the butt whooping. Hopefully you guys had a lot of fun watching this battle as much as I had fun doing it. And if you did, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. As always, everyone, happy hunting. And thanks for watching.